it's not energy exchange. I tell people, I'm like, it's not an energy exchange. Giving you a hug is an energy exchange. Meeting someone, having a conversation is an energy exchange. This is something totally different. We open ourselves up as a vessel with pure energy to flow through us into the person who needs healing. It has nothing to do with an energy exchange at all. Welcome to Holy Chits. I am your host, Christy Austin, here to remind you that you are whole. And chit, a Sanskrit word for consciousness. The reason I started this podcast to collectively raise our consciousness. And I am super glad and happy to announce our guest today. Her name is May Magnavita. She did I say that right, May? Did you I did. That? Good job. Oh, May. All right. She is amazing, awesome, spiritual, uh, light in this life. Um, who has become a great friend of mine. She, I met her through Optimize, going to Optimize, and we learned that we have a lot in common. So, May, please introduce yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, my name is May Magnavita, yes, and I am here to share my story. I'm excited. Um, think how that I became a little bit more spiritual and a little bit more into what I do today, which is Reiki healing and coaching. Thank you, May. And please, if you don't mind, kind of giving us a background of who you are, where you came from. You're from Venezuela, correct? That's right. A little bit of history, if you don't mind getting into the nitty gritty of some trauma that maybe caused you on this healing path that you're on now. Yeah. So I was born, raised in Caracas, Venezuela. I have been in the States for, let's see, since 1999. Um, I have two kids. Um, my daughter is 22. My son is 20. Wonderful, adorable kids. Um, so, um, uh, when I was 12, let's start there. When I was 12, um, growing up in a, a little bit dysfunctional background with mom and dad, uh, we were five kids. Um, uh, mom was a really busy mom that was also working a lot. So there was a lot of chaos going on. Um, and at the age of 12, I was, um, raped and that really, really, change my everything um i was conditioned to believe that that was okay and that i became just really protective and of myself and just energy in general i didn't trust people um it was a really hard time in my life um and yeah that going back to that is very emotional to even think that i went through that and now look at me mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so I thank you for sharing that with us. And I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, I know that that shapes, is, especially at such a young age, to have that trauma shapes like who we are and even our bodies, um, you know, adding this layer of protection and not letting anyone in and being fearful and then also not trusting men. So- have you gotten to a part where you've been able to open yourself up to men and how has that journey looked for you? Yeah. So it has been a process, right? Like it wasn't easy. Uh, I've done a lot of healing around that. And the first layer of my healing is how does it look like to be in, in a relationship, right? When you are embodying your femininity, like the divine feminine, what does that even mean or look like? Uh, so that was like my main work around this because I used to, um, I guess, show up in the world as more in the masculine energy, like very protective, like I said, very like guarded and not trusting and just waiting to be um, abandoned, that type of energy, right? So I didn't really know how to be a woman. I didn't really know 
I thought that that was it. And mom was a good example of that too. So I didn't really have growing up a good example of how to be a woman. So that was layer number one of my healing and just uh, learning how to be more connected to myself and more connected to who I am as a woman and, and my gifts. And um, so after I had a few toxic relationships, obviously, um, as a teenager, um, and then um, my marriage, and then to the beginning of the relationship that I'm now, right? Because I was healing those patterns. I was trying to understand, again, how to be a woman, and how was my relationship with the divine masculine, that it was not about being protected. It was about actually being open and being vulnerable and being able to be seen and heard without having to run away from connection. So that was my main, uh, one of my main layers of healing, just learning how to be a woman and learning how to let go of protection. And that is okay to be me, that it was okay to be um, still and calm and relaxed, that I didn't have to overreact or constantly react to life. So learning how to respond to life has been my biggest lesson. Um, and the way that I respond to life is the way that I respond to my job, to my relationships, to everything. So it definitely took a while to get here, but I'm grateful that I did my, my healing. And now I'm in a totally different, uh, you know, phase in my life. So what was the beginning of your healing journey and what, how did that look to you? What uh, tools and techniques did you utilize? Yeah. So about eight years ago or so going through divorce, um, I was looking, I knew that I needed to do something different. I grew up Catholic and, and Christian, but religion just didn't fit uh, with me. I was questioning church and their beliefs and um, just didn't really feel that that was me. Um, so about eight years ago, going through divorce, I was presented to plant medicine. Um, I was pres um, I was looking for um, I like some sort of something. I knew something was gonna save me, and you know I just needed some sort of light. I felt very dark going through divorce and going through all of that. So scroll into Facebook. I found a Reiki course and that was uh, my, I guess the beginning of this. I didn't know what Reiki was. I didn't know what a Reiki practitioner will do, but I was called to make an appointment and I did my first Reiki session with this woman that is amazing. I'm still in, you know, in touch with her. She became one of my Reiki teachers after a while of working with her. But Reiki did change my life and it did help me see my gifts and understand trauma, but from the spiritual aspect of things. So it's not that I was actually able to understand, oh, wow, this doesn't, this trauma didn't just happen to me. I went through this to grow through it, to talk about it, to help other people through this and yeah, that's where I'm at. But one of my main tools was Reiki and then plant medicine for sure to come to this awareness um, that I, I needed to go through some deep healing. I love that. And I I started somewhere else, but you and I both have that, the Reiki um, in common because Reiki changed my life too. And so many people around me, it's really helped to me. Um, and until you've had an experience, you're kind of like a Reiki. What's that? Like that's energy exchange. It's not energy exchange. I tell people, I'm like, it's not an energy exchange. Giving you a hug is an energy exchange. Meeting someone, having a conversation is an energy exchange. This is something totally different. We open ourselves up as a vessel. We're pure energy to flow through us into the person who needs healing. It has nothing to do with an energy exchange at all. It's a pure, pure vessel. And it it's so powerful. It really has 
changed me, but where I'm opposite and I started at yoga and meditation, and now I'm just kind of learning and getting diving deeper into plant medicine. Um, you started kind of hand in hand. So we've talked a lot about the, the plant medicine and how it's helped you and different, different plant medicines. Um, do you still use plant medicine to, um, help you through things that are going on in your life? I, I do, um, knowing the extent that I did, you know, a few years ago, but yes, I do. Um, I, I believe in mushrooms big time. I, I like microdosing and tuning to the energy of mushrooms. Uh, so that's about it, you know, with plant medicine right now for me, I did so much of it and it was so helpful for me and believe it or not, I feel like I'm still integrating what I learned from, from those years of plant medicine. So um, I don't think that I need it as much. So that's why I haven't really done much of it, but mushrooms are my main teachers right now. And I enjoy working with that. And I love that you said that mushrooms is your main teacher right now, because people usually think as another human being needing to be their teacher. And right. it's not, we have these plants that are our teacher. And like Wim Hof said that ice mm -hmm. is the teacher. Almost definitely to me because it's like you can sit there in tub of ice and that becomes your teacher you're learning you're getting these downloads and I I've had uh recently similar experience as um that you say that you've had with the uh medicine psilocybin being your teacher and it's so incredible because at growing up I was never touched a drug like in my life and I I considered that a drug. And now recently I realized that, no, this is a medicine that, that nature has given us, um, right. when used correctly and knowing how to utilize it in a ceremony surrounding with frequencies right. and the correct setting, it can be so powerful. Um, it really is a teacher. And then whatever you take from that experience, you integrate for years. So right. I, I've really dug deep into learning about these different plant medicines because I've been called to actually, I've been called to do ayahuasca, but um, <laughs> I, I don't want to go to Peru for that. So <laughs> we'll see the time when it, when the time is right, that, that will be, but the, the psilocybin uh, has so many great benefits that yes. they're now doing research on the brain. And there's a, a famous uh, hockey player that it has scans of his brain and they started doing microdosing and continued to do the brain scans to see what the progress was and what was it after a year it completely healed right. and they contribute that to the psilocybin so um, i'm not saying going and taking a bunch of psilocybin to where you can't function i'm saying very tiny tiny amounts has great right. function. if you think about all the mushrooms the lion's mane all these pills that you can take that have different mushrooms that have been known and proven to help your brain function uh psilocybin's the the same thing so i, I love the fact and you actually do like uh cacao ceremonies correct because is a heart opener. Why don't you tell us about? Well, I started working with um, cacao on my own. Um, mm -hmm. So I heard about it being a heart opening uh, medicine. So I'm, I'm like, okay, let me work with this first. Let me go through the process. Let me see what happens. Uh, so I started working with it like about a year ago, just consciously making the cacao, going through the process of talking to it, uh, putting my intentions towards it. And really just journaling, meditating, you know, with it. Um, so it really, really had helped me uh, get even more into my feminine energy, um, really into that space of stillness. And again, being being able to be vulnerable, being okay with being seen, no matter where you're at. Even if you're hurting or if you're sad, if you're angry, being okay to be seen like that, that is okay. Embracing my shadow, embracing my light. And cacao has been another incredible teacher. So that's why I am so passionate about bringing it into my workshops and classes and sharing this medicine with women because it um, doesn't matter what your background is or what you went through in your life. You know, it's important to know how to be, like I said in the beginning, 
in your divine feminine and knowing what that means for you. So op having the heart open and just doing, going through that healing with women is just really powerful. So uh, that's one of my favorite things to do too. And the, the groups that you have, they're empowerment women. They're all women circles where you can feel safe, put down your guard. And yes. uh, for women that might have um, stories of abuse and don't feel that comfortable uh, around them, you really can focus on just being in a space of healing, empowering women. And I agree, the cacao is amazing. The how it opens your heart and brings the floodgate of tears sometimes when you're in this beautiful space. So yeah. I, I think that's incredible that, that you offer those, uh, because so, so many women need that. Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, a lot of people are not exposed to these things. You know, a lot of people, a lot of women that come to me, oh, I didn't know cacao did this. Oh, I didn't know this happened when you did this type of, you know, healing. So yeah, a lot of people just don't know. So it is my, one of my passions to, you know, show people, you know, meditation can change your life. Um, cacao can change your life. You know, if you work on yourself, you can change your life. So just like you with yoga, right? And Reiki. So we know we have walked the walk, we have done the work, and now we're like ready to share it with the world. And then you also do the uh, breathing uh, combination with the biocharger. That's one of your courses at um, Optimize that you offer like every week, once a week, is it? Or every, every other, every other Monday. Yeah, every, every other Monday at 6 p.m. Yeah, so we we do the biocharger. We do, I do guided meditation and I also bring my um, instruments. So I play different things through the uh, class. So it's an hour of just really, I created this class because when I was going through my healing, I didn't really have much accountability. I didn't really have a lot of women that were going through a similar journey. So it felt very lonely. And what I, I have learned is your healing journey doesn't have to be like that. You can, you know, you can connect with other women that are going through the same experience and you can find support and you can find love and you can find a safe space. So to me, it's very important that women feel safe. And when they come to these classes, it's an opportunity for them to reconnect, reconnect with meditation. And I actually had a uh, a woman the other day that first time ever that she has done something like this she's like you know I always heard about meditation but I never experienced it so it was really powerful you know she said you know this is this is incredible I didn't know you could do this um <laughs> so yeah it's it's about teaching you know it's about uh sharing the good news with people so and yeah, bringing women together for the betterment of themselves. And then I learned too, when I'm facilitating quite a bit, you know, I've learned from all the, the, the girls that come to the class. So yeah, every other Monday, 6 p.m., optimize the Tempe location. That's the where Tempe I'm at. location. Okay. I was thinking you did uh, every other weekend at Tempe and then every other at Arcadia, but. Uh, very this, soon, very soon. Okay. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> at Tempe right now, every other weekend at the Monday. Tempe location. Mm -hmm. For anyone who in Arizona, that's that's an awesome offer. And I'm glad that you brought up that you don't have to go through this alone because I feel like so many of us, when we go through this trauma, we isolate ourselves and we feel like we have to go through this alone. And there's no one else out there that could possibly understand what we've gone through. And the truth is you're not alone. Right there's others that have been through this that can help you through what you're going through. And also we're stronger together. Right. So when we are in a setting of powerful women, like-minded beings that have had these similar experiences and have gone through this, um, we actually heal faster and stronger. Right. And the meditations are that much more powerful. I've done, you know, I, do, I meditate every day, but my right. favorite is when I'm in a group setting because I can yes. feel the, the energy. It's that you can feel that collective energy amongst uh, a group of people. That is so very powerful. So I think that's amazing that you offer those um those classes, both at Optimize and where else, where do you do the, the, um, 
group. It's called Soso Healing House is in the Tempe area as well. Okay. Um, and those are once a month, the cacao ceremony with the sound. And I facilitate with my friend, Cheryl, we're both do Reiki and we're both really into helping women. So we do it together. Awesome. I love that. Um, so we'll be sure to, to get all those, the links so people can, um, can jot that down, but I, I want to, uh, dive a little bit more into your healing journey. Um, mm -hmm. When you decided to take this on, did you find it hard? Um, did you find it that you had to shut people out of your life or people didn't understand the journey that you were on? What what was that like for you? Because I know so many people, like we said, feel isolated and feel like they have to go through it alone. And then when you start talking about your healing journey, maybe others around you don't understand. And right. you start feeling like a weirdo, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, my experience with that was um, I didn't know what was going on. Um, I There was so much going on. There was so much awareness all coming at the same time. I didn't know, you know, I was very addicted to anger. That was my my thing. I was very addicted to anger. So to let that go for me was a very interesting process. Uh, again, it comes from the protection and the conditioning that I had when I was a child. But now I know that, you know, that's not, I, I can feel the anger, but I don't need to necessarily express it at someone, right? So uh, for me, I just felt like I didn't, I didn't really want to be seen like that. You know, I didn't want to be seen struggle, like struggling or feeling down about myself because I didn't really know what was going on. So even though I was doing you know, Reiki and I have her, you know, kind of walk me through stuff. I felt like I needed more. I needed more like examples, right. Of people going through the same thing. So little by little, I have built my community of women. Right. But during that time for me, I just, I was so addicted to my patterns that it was just really difficult for me to even connect. Right. Or understanding what connection with other people was. So, um, yeah, so I felt lonely, isolated, and part of that was I was doing it to myself. Or I just didn't know what else to do, right? But the other part was I just didn't have a, a good set of friends. So, or you know, my family um, and I, we took a little bit of a break uh, at some point, uh, just because by going through divorce, that was hard for my family. They, like I said, they were very Christian, and you know, in the Christian church church going through divorce could be seen as not a good thing so I decided to just step back take a few like a year or so away from talking to them and really figuring that out what was really going on right now my mom and I are done quite a bit of healing and my family were all good so you know like I said sometimes you do need to take some space from people uh, sometimes you you do need to be isolated to understand connection to understand right. that you actually won connection. Right. So that was kind of like my, my case. I love that. I love that. I, I agree a hundred percent because family is going to be there and they, you know, when you're, you need to distance yourself, sometimes you can come back and still learn from each other, learn and grow, but it also gives right. that space and creates space to meet other people that are going through the same thing as you and realize that, you know, you're not alone and you don't have to go through it alone. So mm -hmm. I love this community that you've built and created where people don't feel like they have to go through it alone. They can go to your, your ceremonies, your courses at optimize, um, real quick, share your yeah. social media. Cause I think we're about out of time. So, sh uh, share with us your social media that people can follow you, any yeah. websites or, uh, where people can find you and take your courses. The easiest way to find me is through Instagram. So my Insta is the magnetic vibe 22, the magnetic vibe 22. And I'm on Facebook too, under my Yuli Magnavita, which is my full name. So, um, Instagram is the best way to find, find me. I post all my workshops, there, classes, links, uh, et cetera. Awesome. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I'm so grateful.
today. I'm so happy to be on this journey with you. I love and adore you so much. Thank you. I love and adore you too. And thank you for having this space. Thank you for having me and continue to be the beautiful light that you are. Oh, thank you, May. I appreciate you. All right. Well, stay tuned for next week's episode of Holy Chits. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Bye.